There was a girl riding in a communist country in Southeast Asia, can't really tell you all the details, and she was sitting on the back of her mother's motorcycle. And she went by a church, and there was a cross there. And she said, Mother, what is that? And she said, Oh, that's the symbol of the God who died for his people so they could live. Well, not everybody gets the meaning of the cross. But this girl never forgot that. And I can tell you, it was Cambodia. And so later on, the Cambodian communists took over the country. And she had glasses. That meant she was educated. That meant she had to be killed. So they took her out and they lined her up in front of a pet. And the soldiers were there with their guns. And, and, of course, everybody's praying at this point. Well, this girl thought, who do I pray to? And she remembered what her mother said. She said, you can pray to the God. This is the God who died so his people would live. And so she said, Lord, I don't know who you are, but I believe you died so I could live. So I'm praying to you right now. Save me. Well, the, the, the order went to shoot. And the men pulled the trigger, and none of their guns went off. There were eight of them. And so the commander said, okay, shoot up into the air. See how it went off. So, Ready, aim. Nothing. <laughs> he said, shoot up into the air. They all went off. Third time, ready, aim. And the soldiers turned and ran. <laughs> that girl knew the meaning of the cross. Jesus died and rose again to give you life. He wants you to live. Now, every day, people all over, let's say America, they walk by the cross, they put on their earrings, they, uh, but uh, many people don't see the cross. They have eyes to see, but they don't see. And yet, you can see today we're about seeing the cross and seeing its implications. The promise of the cross is that you will live. But some people don't see that. And so I want to summarize three major ideas from this passage. Okay, And, and although we're looking ahead to the cross, Jesus is getting us ready. He's preparing us because we just read about the disciples and brings out these men that are receptive. Not only was she re receptive, these are Samaritans, by the way. And so Jesus sees these receptive people coming that want more. And they've thought, I'm not eligible. I'm a Samaritan. I'm a, a woman who's been rejected. I'm not eligible to enter into what God is doing. And you might feel that way. Satan is the accuser, wants you to think you, you, you're broken, you're, you're disqualified, uh, your past has ruined you, etc. That's not true. Amen? It's not true. You're not disqualified. You are qualified because God loves you. <laughs> That's all the qualification you need. <laughs> God loves you. And so... Jesus in verse 35, that's our key text. Jesus is talking to the disciples. They thought Jesus was hungry for food, and he actually was. Uh, but they said, here, Jesus, we, we bought you some food. Um, and, and he said, well, I have food to eat you know not of. And they said, really, what is this food? And he said, well, my food, look at verse 34, my food food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. And I want you to claim this with me for yourself. You are sent. We're going to see that as the passage goes on. You're sent. Your father has sent you. He has something for you to accomplish. And for you, it's food. For you, it's strength. For you, it's vitality. 
when you're about the Father's business and you're doing what you are uniquely equipped to do, all the way through to the end of the age when we go through the birth pains and the tribulation and the abomination of desolation and the one world government and the great tribulation, all the way through, Jesus is going to give you more. He's going to give you more. He's going to equip you to handle it. You will have food. The world may be starving, but you will have spiritual food. It's yours. It's your inheritance. It's your destiny. What qualifies you? God loves you. <laughs> That's all we need to know. For God so loved the world. And so Jesus said, all right, disciples, now I want you to see something. I'm going to another level. You've learned me as Savior. First level, come and see. You've learned me as Lord. Second level, uh, follow me. Now, third level of discipleship. Lift up your eyes. Look and see. And God is a God of promise. He's a God of covenant. He's a God that cannot lie. When he makes a promise, he keeps his promise. When you see, you are sent. When you see with God's eyes, when you see with eyes of love, really the third level is love. Come and see, learn Jesus as Savior. Follow me, learn Jesus as Lord. Look and see, learn to look at people with eyes of love. We can see with the eyes of love. But here's the thing. Once you see, you're sent. Now you can close your eyes again. You can decide, I'm not going to see them. There are lost people out there. There are hurting people out there. There are people under demonic attack. There are people who have been in foster care. There are people whose parents divorced when they were kids because they were strung out on drugs. And you could decide, I'm not going to see them. I'm, I'm going to live for me. I'm going to live in my own world. I'm going to live right where, where I want to be. But the problem is that's the rut that Satan wants you in. And then once you get in the rut, psh, he clamps down. And you can't get out of that rut very easily. So you don't want to live in the rut of self-centeredness. You want to live with eyes of love, the eyes of Jesus.